want to start this sermon on God will make a way part two. This morning, with his story. By the way, today's service is dedicated to those who are tired of living a life of not enough. Those who want to be from the realm of not enough to more than enough. That will, God will make it happen in your life this year in Jesus' name. Now, going back to the story, I said I want to start with this one here. One of my sons was at the mechanic around the lucky axis. When he was approached by a woman in her thirties, this man walking with her ten-year-old daughter and a baby of less than one year old. She had that one by her hand. And he said, I don't know what you're doing. Was standing was with her too. He said he had noticed her walked by a couple of times not knowing whether to approach him or not but eventually she summoned up the courage to approach him asking him for help she said she and her children had not eaten and had no food to eat the first question he asked her was where was her husband or the father of the children? To which she said she let them, she, the man left them eight months ago. For another woman. And they had no idea where he was. She claimed she had borrowed money from her pastor. And came all the way from Oshodi to meet with the elder sister of her husband. But upon getting there, the woman was unable to help them. As she was terribly sick, the woman was terribly sick. That's the, the, the senior sister of her husband was terribly sick. And I just undergone an operation. So she, he asked her, what do you do? He said that uh, she teaches in a primary school. And that her salary is 15,000 naira. Some of you may find this story because of the lies that you heard from different people and say maybe there is no truth in it. Some of you may find it difficult to believe because of the stories you heard from different people and the lies they've said concerning their situation. But I tell you there are people living like this. There are people really living like this. This is exactly the condition. This is exactly their condition. Anyway, that my son Render the help he could for her. And ask her, what do you think would be the lasting solution to this problem? So that you will not be going about begging. 
Koma ba ma lo ka kire ma toro wo kire mo And then she said, well, Funny, if eh? she is able to get some small money, she can start selling some things. So my son gave him, gave her, uh, gave her his number and told her to call him during by the end of the month and he will find out something. Uh, let's leave that aside. Have you noticed in the last one year or so or more the number of people walking about the streets standing on corners and major roads that it has drastically increased the number of people begging for food has drastically increased. More and more people, both young and old, men and women, are becoming more destitute. Really, nothing makes sense anymore. The more you try to think these things true and get an understanding of these things, the more it does not just make any sense. And the does not just make any sense. Only God makes sense nowadays. Only God makes sense. This woman, I just told you a story. Is one of thousands just like her who have nobody to turn to for help and nowhere to look to for even the slightest bit of hope. Glory be to the name of God. In fact, most times, the people you go to for help sometimes they be in the worse condition than you and it's only their clothes that is covering their suffering only God makes sense listen carefully recently one of the things the Lord said to me is that a time will come and it's not too far that people both old and young literate and illiterate market women students everybody will go on the streets holding placards and saying this suffering is too much. He cannot take it anymore. Write it down. It will happen soon. Are Every day things gets worse. Nothing seems to be getting better. People is getting poorer. Those who are in the middle class are dropping to the level of being to the poor now. Things are Everything keeps getting expensive. But there is no increase in income. So that's that if you and I are to survive this system, we need to go back to that. 
was 20 years ago. What God told us that it is only him we should look up to for help. Now we need God more than ever before. This is also the time, beloved, that we need to start applying spiritual principles. Because it is only God and His ways that can help us. That's why we need to apply spiritual principles. If you want to work with God, you must be ready to apply spiritual principles in your work with Him for you to be successful. I want us to look at the case of the widow of Zerifat in 1 Kings 17. First Kings 17, 8 to 16. She had absolutely nothing. She was even preparing to prepare a last meal for herself and her son to die. Just eat it and die. She had no nobody to turn to for help. Nowhere to go to for assistance. Sometimes we find that difficult to believe. Is it really possible that someone will have nowhere to turn to? No one to turn to for assistance. There are people like that, beloved. They look at what happened. They are looking at what happened. She came across the prophets of God. They are looking at what happened. Who told her to give him food? Now, we are all understand. We will say, not even concerned that she, she has said that it was her last meal. Light here, Nani Kotoka. In Toku, let me at Toma Menalo, who ye? For herself and her child. Who at Toma? And then they will die. We are also Jacan Woku. But Santa God said, Give me. You might as well on it, shall I share for me now? We are talking about spiritual principles now. You need to apply it to survive this period. You need it now. Particularly in this period of not enough. In this period of not enough. In 1 Kings 17, 13 to 14. Please listen to me carefully. I need your attention. Whether you are literate or not literate. Whether you are knowledgeable or not knowledgeable. Please listen. Because when it comes to spiritual principles, when it comes to spiritual principles, you have to put your education aside. You can't apply your head knowledge. Are you following me this morning? And I know that each and every one of us here, we need, have one need or the other. That we don't have the resources to get. We don't have the resources to get it. We don't have the means to obtain it. That's why you have to listen. When you get to that level, then it is time to apply spiritual principles. Are you following me? It's not that I'm wise. I know. I'm intelligent. Listen carefully. 
First Kings 17, 13 to 14. Don't be afraid. Go home. Are you and do as you have said. But what make a small loaf of bread for me? From what you have, and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. Sir, I'm not sure you are hearing me well. Baba, The little that I have left is not even enough for me. Even for my son. But the two of us, we are just going to manage it. Eat it and die. But you say I should go and make for you first. What will be left? Elijah said, I'm not speaking of my own accord. I'm speaking based on what the Lord had told me. He said, if you make this food for me, the jar of flour will never be used up. The jar of oil will not run dry. Not just for this period. Not just for this afternoon. Not just for today. But throughout the period of famine. Until the day the Lord sends rain to the land. You will never be in lack of water. It comes to a time that your resources cannot provide you your need. Then you need to apply spiritual principles. Are you following me this morning? So she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman. And her family. For the jar of flour was not used up. And the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord. Spoken by Elijah. If you want to live in abundance in the midst of famine, it is time for you to think of applying spiritual principles. I just want you to imagine the way that woman, her son, and her family will have been feeling through during that period. How they will have been feeding. Knowing fully well that the floor would always be there. The job oil will never run dry. Imagine the way they will be eating. They will be eating well. Are you following me? What did she do? She basically applied the Elijah principle. Which was the counsel of God. And that was the last day she faced poverty or hunger. Because she applied that spiritual principle. In this day, beloved, when nothing is certain, 
we can only say of today we don't know what tomorrow will be. it is important beloved that we ensure our tomorrow in God I want to do this we can ensure our tomorrow in God when it comes to our needs is to apply spiritual principles. Some people will say, well, I have every need that I have. I have money. I'm okay. I'm living in abundance. I don't need to make, ask God, I don't need to do a make away seat for me. I don't need to do a make away seat for me. For the day I would need help. Because really, I have everything. Okay, good. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. If that is the way you feel, and you have a car, why did you insure your car in comprehensive? Why did you do comprehensive insurance? Maybe you have money. If it's why you buy another one, you change it now. You don't need to do comprehensive. When you keep insurance money for against problem tomorrow, what do you think you're doing? You are preparing just in case there is a problem. Just in case there is an accident. Or there is a theft. I can always get money back to buy from the insurance. I can always trust the insurance company to give me money. To provide another one for me that I will need. Are you following me? When it comes to obeying spiritual principles, it pertains or it concerns everyone. No matter how comfortable or rich you may be. Because you don't know tomorrow. That's why you sow a seed against your tomorrow. Seed is not for today. I, I want us to get this right because I don't want anyone to think I am excluded from this. Am I making sense to you? Sure, oh, it's only the poor that it appertains to you. Those who don't have money, they are the one who cannot feed, they are the one pastor is talking to. No! It pertains to everyone. Are you following me this morning? Because we only know today. And like I said, no matter how rich you may be, there are some things that your money cannot buy. And you need to apply spiritual principles in order to obtain it. Are you following me this morning? We need the Elijah's type spiritual principle that he offered that widow of Zarephat. We need to apply that kind of principle now. Whether we are poor, whether we are rich, whether we are comfortable to secure our tomorrow. An hour today. Are you following me this morning? See, nothing makes sense. Everything that is going around us today doesn't make any sense. Only God makes makes sense. Now, if only God makes sense, 
If only the ways of God make sense, then it means that it's only God that has a clue or a way out of this problem. Now, if, on, if it's only God that has a clue and a way out of this problem, then we need to apply spiritual principles that God has laid down for us in case we find ourselves in this situation. Some of you may not be in that situation right now, but you don't know you may be in that situation tomorrow. What's your insurance? What is your insurance? Am I making sense to you? If you're hearing me, shout a glorious hallelujah. hallelujah. It's only God. That can deliver us from the confusion and chaos that lies ahead. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Let me use this opportunity to encourage all of you who don't usually join our Zoom services online. On Monday mornings, Wednesday evenings, and Friday evenings, mornings, you are missing. You are missing. You better try. Because, and it doesn't cost anything. You can be in your bathroom, you can be in your toilet, you can be driving, and you are hearing. Because it's the one of the things you gain during that period is that you are privileged to hear of some spiritual principles that can help you in your day-to-day -day work to be successful in life. The Bible says this word of God you will meditate therein. If you don't have any word to meditate, what, yeah, about, about, what word will you work on? And which, if you don't work on any word, yeah, how will your way be prosperous? So you need to create time to yeah, hear the word. And not just hear, apply it into your daily yes, lives. That's yeah. why the online Zoom messages or services is very important for you to take very important this year. And when you apply spiritual principles, you are on your way out of problems. You know, the world we live is also spiritual. That's why we need spiritual principles. If you don't apply spiritual principles, you only get deeper in that mess. Let us look at the widow of Let us look at the widow of Zarephat. You will see three very clear spiritual principles. Three very clear, clear spiritual principles. Number one, the principle of sowing and reaping. Number two, the principle of walking in complete obedience to the word and instructions of God. It's also a spiritual principle. The top spiritual principle is exercising absolute faith in God. In His Word and the Word to His servant. Let's look at. The principle of sowing and reaping. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Bible says, Give and it shall be given to you. A good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Will be poured into your lap. 
Oni o sun wa ki mole ami ko ati akun wo sile la o fun fun aka re for the measure with which you use to re o sun wa ti wo fi won it will be measured to na la fi won pada fun iwo na let's look at this in the case of the widow ele ka wo ni ti obirin opo yi this widow upon hearing what elijah told her and that's what a desperate condition pelu epo ti obirin wa je pe epo to ku fun itara o se ti elijah ni ko se she worked that principle o mu ilana na o mu lo let me present to you with a scenario je fi se le ka fi han wa and ask you what you will do if you are in the position, position of god ba wa ni ku olorun let's say you see two people who are desperately in need of money or one ni lo wo girigidi abi okan the two of them ameji she has 10 naira she he has 10 naira and then somebody comes and meets him and say yeah i am hungry i'm in desperate need of money to buy food for my children we have not eaten since morning yes eaten are you following me he looked at a condition our condition is even worse than he is and he said honestly i don't have i would have loved to help you but this money that i have see my children too that's why i want to use my food for them they have to know and told her and told her sorry so he, she came to her who is also in the situation with him with our own children too and told that ha ah, now wow and this is all i have and i was actually planning to use it to buy food for my myself and my children you have to know but your own case is serious you know, you it's it's it. It. okay just take and say but that's why you say don't worry we we'll believe god maybe before afternoon so long you, 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 you take and god give you for your children and he gives her the money are you hearing me are you hearing me and he gives that to go and buy for her what children if, now, for if you are god and these two have been asking you for help who will you be eager to help first who ani who eh and some now is it her or him she ara pin ni abarabirin ha him oludu of course god will move to help her and to she na lo 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 ran lowo you mean that's what all you have <inaudible> with your children <inaudible> you, you overlook every and you still help her <inaudible> meanwhile he is holding on to his own <inaudible> who would i help first <inaudible> i will help her <inaudible> when i choose to help her <inaudible> will i help, just help her or i will help her well <inaudible> which one i will bless her well <inaudible> That's the spiritual principle. But that is not the way an average man would think. The man will always think of himself. First. I would think that if I give this away, what will be left? How would I survive? But spiritual principle says, give and leave the rest and trust God. What your money cannot provide for you cannot buy for you 
but God can make it happen in your life. But for you to happen in your life, you have to follow the spiritual principles laid down by God for you to experience that kind of a miracle. Miracles are a product of spiritual principles. Without applying spiritual principles, there cannot be miracles. Concerning your need, my need, that our resources cannot give us today. We need a miracle. And if we must obtain a miracle, then we must apply lay down spiritual principles that will generate that miracle. And like I said earlier, when it comes to applying spiritual miracles, you remove your head knowledge. You don't process, you don't think it. Can, can I tell you something, beloved? Is it possible for you to invest in God and invest wrongly? Is it possible? possible? But do you know, beloved, that by applying spiritual principles in your daily life, you are actually investing in God. And when you apply the principle laid down by God, you are investing in God. You can never go wrong. That is one area you and I must focus on this year. Applying spiritual principles in our daily work with God. Because we need Him now. He is our only way out we of this on present predicament. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Elijah told that woman, give me your food and you will have in abundance. He was simply saying to her, give and it shall be given to you. In good measure, press down, shake it together. That's what he was telling her. That's what he told her. And thank God she applied the principle immediately. And she saw results. Thank you. Let's 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 look at something. I want to show you something. <clears throat> Since I've been buying cars, I have never done comprehensive insurance. None of my cars is comprehensive. When I buy the car, I insure it in the Lord immediately. I insure it in the Lord. Actually, how? I found out how much is the insurance. How much are you charging me for insurance? When I have an idea of what they are charging me, I put that seed into the Lord. To secure the future of the car. I'm trading my fear. 
over anything happening to this guy. For faith in you. With this seed. So in case anything happens, I trust you, Lord, that you will give me another one. I paid once and it has never failed. Are you following me? Now, I realize that many of you will not do that. You know why? Because you would rather put your faith in the insurance company. You put your faith in man. You secure your future in man. But not in God. And you are a believer. Why do you trust in the provision of man? And you cannot trust in the provision of God. I know this is tough for many of you to, to accept. But twice my car is involved in an accident. The two times I was not the one driving. Two times. I wasn't the one driving. But I tell you one thing, beloved. God used my car actually to save other people's lives. If Eko was coming from the other side of the plane was going straight to the bus stop and God placed my car right there for him to hit so that he would not kill them. Why do I The damage was minimal. It was not it was nothing. God took care of it just like that. I didn't even feel anything. Recently, on the 31st, God also had warned me. He said, Don't use any other car except for this one. No. Don't drive. Don't do Just this one is what you should use. And on the 31st, I was coming to church. And my own were going, and this car came and bashed us from the back. But you know what? He was sleeping. If we did not stop him, if he did not pass my car, people were crossing. If we had gone, he would have crossed them. It was my car that he hit from the back that stopped him from hitting the people. And if you look at my car, I brought, you will not even know anything happened to it. God took care of it. But the fact that I appreciate the fact that he even used it to save lives. It's more important to me. I am not going to use my car to save lives. But then within two, three days, yeah, God has sorted it out. The car has been fixed. I and didn't even ask anybody to. Uh, the guy that he, I just said, you can go. In, two uh, case, in both uh, two uh, cases, uh, I, did uh, not, uh, I just told them, you can uh, go. God took care of it. Now, there are incidences, beloved, that if you say you have money, you can take care of it. Something might be more than money. You can live at only Jew to only color. I want you to start applying 
spiritual principles in your everyday work you know, for today. That is the only time you can boast of peace and confidence concerning tomorrow. The investment you do in man, man can fail you. Are you following me? They can fail. They can disappoint. They can disappear. But God will never disappear. Do you know why we are not witnessing miracles in this part of the, this, this world now? Because the spiritual principle we needed to apply in order to receive these miracles, we have moved away from them. We have replaced spiritual principles with head knowledge. With the way we can see. And even when we are told. Ah, sir. You know you are the pastor. Your own faith is stronger. My own faith is not as strong as The Bible says Elijah was a man like us. He said there will be no rain. And there was no rain. No rain. No rain. No rain. No rain. No rain. Why did Jesus come in flesh? To show us that it is possible. The world wants to see the evidence of the God that we serve. Part of the prayer we pray this morning is that we want God to see the evidence of the God that we serve as he manifests victory in our life this year. For those great truths, beloved, in order for us to experience them, spiritual principles is important. And you know what is We can't ignore spiritual principles and expect God to continue to perform his wonders in our lives. It can never be done. There is something because you see, when we talk about principles like this, I will refer to the case of widow of Jerefat. People that are rich are quick to say it's only meant for the poor. Me, I'm, me, I'm okay. I need to talk to be honest with you, when you are talking about me, God forgive me. Until I get on the side of the few days ago, I have told some people that I'm not going to be able to do this. Until I get on the side of the few days ago, I have told some people. Maybe you don't even need to do that. You don't even need because you don't need anything now. But oh, that's wrong. Because no matter how comfortable you are, if you don't need it now, you may need it tomorrow. Are you following me? You know, I say of one of my sons, is in church this morning. I always say to him, I say, I have this belief that there is nothing you will need that God cannot give you, that God will not give you. That when it comes to praying for you, I just believe that I'm, I'm not worried about your future. I always say to him. And you know why I say to him? It's because of his lifestyle. The way he behaves, there is no one that goes to him for help he doesn't help. Even when he does not have, you will not know he does not have. He's always reaching out. He's always reaching out. And so I always say to him, and no matter God would, I, I say to him in confidence, are you following me? I tell him that God would always be there for you. Why? Because he's following that spiritual principle of sowing and repeat. Why I'm that confident in him that God will always be there for you is because of that principle that you have maintained. So he. So he. 
always sowing and not complaining. So, have that confidence. That's what gives you the confidence. Am I making sense? To you? When you don't think that ah, I don't have a house, I don't have a this, and now my mates have this, and someone is coming to me, when would that be my house? But yet to give, you will eventually have your house. I don't think you understand what I'm talking about. All my mates have a house. All my mates have built houses. I don't have yet. And everybody keeps coming to me for help. When they want to build that, they say, I come and give me, come and give me money to buy this. Come and give me money to buy furniture. Me, I don't have. But I don't say because I don't have. I, will, I keep giving them. One day you will have better. It is a spiritual principle. When you give, it shall be given to you in good measure. Press down, shake it together, running over. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that's why our problem is. It is not children's school fees. I, God will provide. I have already. Money now. At least with my income, I should be able to. Based on your thoughts today. Today, today, loan in here. You may even be able to do that. But there are needs that you are not thinking about now. But even your money cannot provide. God forbid sickness. That's when you know that money can put money can be put to shame. Are you following me this morning? When we say God to make a way for us, we are not just talking about making way in terms of food or money. Even where our health is concerned, can money buy child? Can money buy health? Are you following me this morning? Can money buy happiness? Can money buy peace? If you think very well, you will realize that there is something that you will need that will require your giving. It will not be now. Maybe in the future. Something that you need. That will require your giving today. What you sow is what will determine what you will reap. It's a spiritual principle. Are you following me this morning? If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of my sons sent a message to me last week. Last week. That's in Ken. He said he noticed among the points that I spoke to the church about last week Sunday that I did not address the area of giving. And he went on to say that he knows it's a subject that I shy away from. He said he too noticed that people's attitude to giving in this ministry is very poor. He said, sir, please, you need to encourage us more. Talk to us more so that we can do the right thing. 
and we can get the reward in terms of financial blessings and breakthrough. I, re I replied him and said to him, noted, I will do my best. Now, if one person notices it, then I'm sure that there will be others who probably will have noticed yeah, it. But then it's not just for us to notice it. If we know we are not doing the right thing, then onus is on us. We don't even need anybody to tell us to do the right thing. Are you following me this morning? But I will continue to talk to you. No from time to time. Time. Now, still going to that area of spiritual principle of giving, of trusting God to provide as insurance for your tomorrow. I ask myself daily God what in the what in this world makes sense more than you kilo na to ti e mo gbo wa laye ju eyan olorun lo what in this world can i trust ki mo le gbe kan le laye yi than you ju yin lo Who can I really believe will be there for me? In this world, than you. What in this world can I Which investment makes sense? An investment in you, Lord. You know, when we take time to reflect and think this. Way. We will see our folly. Ah. Ah. True, no. I will have trusted God. I will have invested in God. I will have believed in God in this. Am I making sense to you? Am I and repeat. That's the first spiritual principle that we but see that the that woman obeyed which generated a miracle. What is the second spiritual principle which we must also apply this year and going forward and see what you see. If you want God to make way for us and give us miracles, obedience to God's commands, obedience to God's instructions. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands that I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations of earth. If you fully obey the Lord and his commands. One of the prayers we prayed this morning is that God should create a space for us at the top in our various fields. Not And the Bible says here that the condition for God to make a way for us at the, at the top to create a sense for us at the top is that we must follow this spiritual principle by carefully following God's instructions. 
and obey his commands. We have no trust in this matter. It is when we do this, we love that it will bring about a miracle. Are you following me this morning? When we follow these principles, miracles are How often do you obey divine instructions? Divine instruction came to us. I told you. December. And I knew that the moment I said it, some of you have said in your mind, let's just forget it. It's not for us. It doesn't apply to us. We don't need it. We are not doing it. We don't even have the resources. God told you to do. The one who has seen the future, the one who knows how bad it's going to be, the one who knows you cannot survive tomorrow without him. No matter how well you think you are, it says do this so that you can be sure that I'll be I'll be I'll I'll be able to meet with all your needs. But to say, but we pray, I don't need it. I don't need it. Are you working in obedience? And then somewhere in the year, you will say, God has not met your need. But he told you what to do. Did you do it? Did you do it? We talk about need that we know about now. What about need you don't even know? But you will need tomorrow. It's a team more to share your love, Uncle. God is not forcing you to bring what you don't have. He's just saying, do what you don't have. Say, so whatever little you have, whatever it is you know that you cannot use to solve your problem, it cannot solve it. Trust me with it. And see if I will come to you that need. And the interesting thing is that he has a track record. He has done it before. And he can do it again. Taught spiritual principle. Exercising absolute faith in God. Exercising absolute faith in God. We see that take place. Also, in the life of this widow of Zarephath, she followed the principle of sowing and reaping. She followed the principle of walking in obedience. She did exactly what Elada asked her to do. And thirdly, the principle of faith. 
What's your faith like in God? Particularly when it comes to the area of giving. Or releasing what you have to get what God has for you. What's your faith like? Do you believe? One thing God works with is our faith. Jesus could not do so much for his people because they didn't have faith. Listen carefully, beloved. Each of these spiritual principles will generate a miracle on his own. Not to talk of when you apply the three of them. Which was what this woman did. And I will tell you one thing, beloved. In our work with God daily, from time to time, we will need to exercise this basic three principles. Sowing, walking in obedience, and exercising absolute faith in God. When we do this, miracle is bound, miracle will definitely abound. Now, one thing I would like you and I to do this morning, or as individuals, is examine what is it in you that makes it difficult for you to exercise this thing this spiritual principles and that is what we have to work on this year starting from now why is it that find if you got to give to sow why is that find if you got to work in complete obedience why is that find if you got to exercise complete faith why is it that I find it easier to exercise faith in man in company in company in organizations than to have faith in God why you may need to educate yourself place man place God you begin to compare Maybe it will help you to determine who yeah, should have faith in. Whatever you have to do to help yourself to build up your faith in God, you as a against any other thing, you will have to do that. Yes, 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 you will down, see. Who do you take their word seriously? More than the word of God. Place the person and God and his word together. Whose word will stand forever? Whose word will fail? Go back to history. Every time God wants to do new things, every time God wants to introduce himself to us, sometimes he will tell us by what he has done in the past. And he will tell us, go and bring our weaknesses. Who is it that has done something similar? Sometimes God comes to our level. And say, let us dialogue. Just to convince us of the need why we should trust him. But yet, do we? That's why we are lacking. Unlike our parents, 
God will never compromise his principle to please us because he wants to make us happy so that we will not cry like lie if God were to do that then a lot of us will be smiling and happy many of our needs will have been met Many of our needs will have been met. But God will not compromise. His principle. And that's why many of our needs are not met. Because we are not following those spiritual principles. The difference between the believers of today and the believers of old is that the believers of old they walk by spiritual principles. Believers of today we walk by head knowledge based on what we can see, what we can feel, what we can perceive, what we get. Are you following me this morning? Yes, sir. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. You know, the first time I appreciate the blessing in giving and how blessed it is for me when I give or when I sow into the things of God. The first time I appreciated really that I've come to full understanding was when Moses told God concerning when Shadrach, I mean, when um, Korah, Tatan, and Abiram, Abiram, when they messed up, when they rebelled against him, Moses went to God. See, see how Moses said God should punish them all. See the punishment too. He said, God. Don't collect the offering. You consider that as a punishment. You will only consider punishment when you know the blessings that comes with giving. What Moses was saying to God, don't bless them again. Because your offering generates a kind of blessing on his own. Your seed generates a kind of blessing on his own. Shows your trust in God. Shows your faith in God. Guarantees you some miracle already. When I raise up your seed envelopes to God every night and which I said I'll do throughout the year and I raise it up there. One of the things I say to God I said that this, these are the six envelopes of your children. All of them trusting you. Trading what they have. That they know they cannot by any means get on their own. Trading it for faith in you that you are more than able to provide for them that need. They are giving you this for you to make your way. Be it whether it has to do with their finances, has to do with their health, has to do with their children, whatever it is, you only God, you know believe they know you can do it because with you all things are possible with this seed move mountains cause wars to fall perform miracles in their life you do great things do mighty things and so on and so forth Moses recognized the blessing that comes with giving that God gives to them not because they give to God not because God is in it but that God gives to them he realized that it was for their benefit so he said I know for as long as you receive it you have to bless them don't receive it don't take it 
in, in other words, he was saying, don't bless them. Don't increase them. Don't protect them. When they come into need, nothing will plead for them. Nothing will speak for them. He has killed them already. They are dead already. He now see the soldier give them an unusual death. Finish. Now he said, "Oh, finish." Many of us don't even understand that God taking our offering is a blessing to us. Now I want We are the one that is enjoying. He, he, he doesn't need it. Oh, long on, hello. We are alone. God will alone buy book on it. But sometimes our wickedness. My wife, how are you? By me, this flesh. And what are you? Is what is responsible for the way we think. Oh, long, Jack. I'm a robot. That when we do things like this, we think we do to man. We think we do it unto man. We don't know what we are doing it unto God. And for our future. Ah, my boy. Oh, long, long. She's a seven dinner. Iri ojo wa juani. Are you following me this morning? She's a banana baller, are you? If you're hearing me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we start applying this spiritual principles, miracle will abound. I want to see you apply it this year. I want you to make up your mind to work with spiritual principles this year. I want your life to generate miracles. I want your testimony this year to be part of that. God did wonders and miracles in your life. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you As a round of this morning, let me remind you again. This life we live is full of problems, trials and challenges, crisis after crisis. One of the prayers that I pray to God in the night for the church, for all of you and myself, is that God should supply us with daily wisdom to handle everyday crisis. As he supplies us with the solution, let him also give us wisdom on how to handle it and manage it. it. Last week, I heard of a woman that died who committed suicide in a bank. Who committed suicide in a bank because she lacked the wisdom to be able to, that she needs to handle the crisis. The problem is there. But she does not have the wisdom to be able to handle it. Until God provides solution, we need wisdom on how to handle this daily crisis. We need God's divine help. Every day is one problem after the other. It's one crisis after the other. And so I'm getting from one another one is coming in. It's as if life is all, all about problems. That is why if we are to live a successful life, we have to apply all spiritual principles. We cannot live like any other person in this world. We have to, our life has to reflect spiritual following God's principles. It doesn't mean we don't have talent. But at least we will have a way out. And no challenge will make us to commit suicide. Are you following me? Now, I guess the only pain we will observe in applying spiritual principles is pain to our flesh. Every time you want to apply spiritual principles, the only thing that cries against it is our flesh. Ha! Ha! Hey! Hey! 
But our flesh knows it's not going anywhere. Does that, does that shall return? Are you following me? Our flesh is not going to benefit us. Our flesh cannot solve our problem. So we cannot afford to pity our flesh. Our flesh can only send us into trouble. And to early death. Because so we can't afford to pay attention to the flesh. Pride is a product of flesh. False sense of self worth is a product of flesh. Unteachable spirit is a product of flesh. Arrogance is a product of flesh. I know. I know it. Nobody can tell me. It's a product of flesh. It can't take us anywhere. It cannot generate the miracle we need. It cannot bring solution to the problem we have. Are you following me this morning? This morning, I want to encourage you and I. Yes. There are problems everywhere. Challenges everywhere. But we are assured. And when it comes to us, children of God, if you follow the spiritual principle laid down by God for us, our life will be wonderful. Deuteronomy 28, 28, 1 to 14. It's all about spiritual principles. Read it when you get to. And there are other scriptures like that. That talks about other spiritual principles. Indeed, beloved, for every problem you go through in life, there is a spiritual, there is a spiritual principle that has been laid down for you to follow to bring about solution to the problem. Every problem has its own spiritual principle. If you follow that spiritual principle, you are home free. I pray for someone this morning. Today will mark the end of not enough in your life in Jesus. Today, today, that spirit of not enough. Always having to beg. Would take the bag and baggages out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Whatever hinders you or makes it impossible for you to obey this spiritual principles. That will bring about a major breakthrough in your life. God himself will remove it from your life. Today, I declare total enmity between you and everything that hinders you from walking in complete obedience to the instructions of God in Jesus Christ. Everything that makes it difficult for you to operate on spiritual principles. Today in the name of Jesus, I separate you from them in the name of Jesus. Whatever hinders your faith that does not help you to walk in faith, Absolute faith in God. Today, in the name of Jesus, I rubbish it in your life. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Let us bow down our heads and begin to talk to God.